because these can actually place added stress on the animals, according to the Animal Science Department at Purdue University. These animals that are in these cramped feed lots, they also have a higher risk of spreading bacteria through feces because when one cow gets sick, then they're all going to get sick because they're in such cramped conditions. They also eat an incredibly high calorie diet in order to fatten them up to make them bigger. If a, the last months of a cow's life are spent fattening them up, it's really no surprise that the quality of the meat suffers. Cows that eat more grass, the ones that are allowed to spend more time in pastures, more time feeding and grazing, they have a healthier meat. According to an article in Time Magazine called What's So Great About Organic Food, cows that eat more grass, they have a higher ratio of omega-3 fatty acids compared to omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3s are the ones that are really important. It's why everybody's fish on a regular basis because it has all those omega-3s. Meats that have a higher ratio of omega-3 fatty acids can actually reduce the risk of cancer, reduce the risk of heart disease, and actually reduce arthritis as well. Um, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in grass-fed beef is 1.5 to 1. The omega-6 fatty acids are the ones that we all get tons in our diet and they're not important. It's the omega-3s that are important. So in this grass-fed beef with this 1.5 to 1 ratio, it means that for every 1.5 grams of omega-6, there's 1 gram of omega-3. So it's a much better percentage. Grain-fed beef has a ratio of 7 to 1. And that means that for every one gram of omega-3s, there are seven grams of omega-6s. So the ratio, the proportion of omega-3s is much less. But the nutritional content is only one reason to choose organic beef. Antibiotics are another huge reason to choose organic beef. Why do we feed antibiotics for our livestock? Is it just because they're sick? No. Small doses of antibiotics daily actually make cows gain 3% more body weight than without, according to a debate on the PBS website called Make Sure Meat Safe. There are government regulations that say no beef with antibiotic residues exceeding the FDA standards is allowed to enter the market. Now, that should mean that all beef sold in the U.S. is free of antibiotics, but the key term is exceeding FDA standards. So what are these FDA standards or limits? I spent hours researching the USDA website and the FDA website, and I could not find what those standards or limits are anywhere. Shouldn't any amount of antibiotics in our beef, shouldn't that be considered wrong? And what are the consequences of all those low-dose antibiotics that we're eating on a regular basis? But antibiotics can also transfer to our produce. According to an article in the Scientific American, and it referenced a study done at the University of Minnesota, vegetables can actually absorb antibiotics when they're grown in soil fertilized with manure. And that's because 90% of the drugs that we give to livestock, 90% of those antibiotics are actually excreted in urine and feces, and that's what makes up manure. The manure is then used to fertilize the land. In this study, plants that were grown for six weeks, that was it, just six weeks, they already had antibiotics in their leaves. The amounts were really small, but once again, as this article questioned, what are the long-term health implications of having antibiotics that almost all over food? But the antibiotic concerns aren't just about the antibiotic residue. According to a study done by the Translational Genomics Research Institute, there's a link between the return, the routine use of those low-dose antibiotics and in livestock production and antibiotic, antibiotic resistant MRSA or MRSA. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about that, but it's a bacteria that when, uh, when someone becomes sick with it, we can't use antibiotics to treat it because they're not effective, which can lead to a potentially deadly infection. Now, this was the first study of its kind. It actually looked at the individual parts of the DNA of these bacteria, and it showed the evolutionary change between what originally started as bacteria that was susceptible to antibiotics, which means bacteria we can actually treat with medicines, that then got spread to livestock. And then because of all those low-dose antibiotics they get every day, they became unsusceptible to antibiotics. And that's because those low-dose antibiotics weren't enough to kill the bacteria. And so in other words, the bacteria became able to overcome it and no longer can treat it. The FDA is also concerned over these antibiotics in livestock. According to a news release in January, they issued an order that was effective April 5th that said 
none of a certain type of antibiotics were allowed to be used in livestock. And that was to protect the effectiveness of those drugs for the human population to be able to treat human illness. But um, antibiotics aren't the only problem. We also feed hormones to our cattle. Livestock are given hormones to encourage growth. 